afternoon. There we go. Thank you. So how many of you all uh, have a smartphone or a tablet on you right now? There we go. That's what I thought. And, you know, you join about 3.65 billion human beings on this planet that also carry these on a daily basis. Right? We live in a very, very connected world. And if I had to guess, about half of you this morning, before you had any breakfast or put on deodorant or kissed your spouse or loved one, or had that cup of coffee that's so utterly important, especially if you're a student, the first thing you did was check that mobile device, because that's about the statistics that last right now in North America. We are living in a very connected society, and it's only getting more connected. It's not only about those devices you're carrying in your pocket, it's spreading to all kinds of things like wearables or cars or appliances and televisions. That one picture there is a, a connected price tag so you can change pricing dynamically based on supply and demand or the connected wine bottle that'll tell you about the grapes and the temperature and the environment when they were picked or the haptic fork that made such news a few years ago at, at CES at the Consumer Electronics Show that tells you if you're eating too quickly. It knows more than you do. Or maybe the one that uh, has stuck out to me in the last uh, year or so which is the connected diaper which uh, informs you if your child needs changing. I mean, we have a lot of connected stuff in this world. And the reality is uh, the analysts are suggesting that by the year 2020, we'll have about 50 billion connected things on this planet. Right now, we only have about 1%. We have 99% of the things in this world that continue to connect. And by that point, that 50, 50 billion point, it'll just be shy of about 3% of the world will be connected. That's a lot of growth. That's a lot of opportunity for those of you in the working world or those of you that are entering the working world. Now, we talk about the connected world so often uh, through the things, but is this really a product conversation? The reality is these products have sensors in them. The environment are having more and more sensors in them that are producing information, producing data. And that data be can become insights. It, uh, insights for how the product should work or insights for the company who produced the product about you and how you're using it or maybe informing the product to be different if you're using it versus if you're using it. Okay? This is not just a product conversation, it's an ecosystem conversation. The, real wor the, the world that we're all living in is absolutely connecting. So why? People often ask me, okay, great, we get it, there's a lot of connected stuff around us. So, so why is this happening? Well, this simple kind of equation here, not uh, my friends in the engineering school that I teach uh, wouldn't probably appreciate the simplicity of the, uh, the equation, but the, the reality is we have a ubiquitous network, uh, a network that basically can reach anybody or anything on this planet. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit more or a little bit less, but for the most part, we can connect to anything. We have embedded technologies that's now smaller, cheaper, and more powerful than ever before that you can embed them inside of things. And for the pieces that you can't fit or afford to put inside of the product, you can put it in this cloud, this data center somewhere, the, a place with, where someone else spent money on computers, and they kind of rent it to you as you need it. The barriers of technology entry are pretty much obliviated. Now, all of you that raised your hands with those mobile phones, that's another key aspect. You don't even need to embed so much of this technology in things anymore because you're carrying it all with you. You've got the communication. You've got the storage. You've got the processing power. And when you have a connected wine bottle, you don't have any of that stuff in it. You just have a small tag, and you put your phone against it, and it uses all the power that you carry with you in your pocket to connect it. So again, the barriers of entry are removed. Oh, and then there's you. You all are, are generating information at rates never seen before. You're taking pictures, recording videos, social, using social media to tweet or do whatever people do in college these days and create information. And all those sensors that are in those devices, they're also collecting and creating information. In fact, you're getting very, very, very good at trading that information for value. Many of you may have used a mapping software uh, to get here today. And you probably didn't pay for that mapping software. It was on your phone. But what you did is you generated a bunch of information by using it, and the company that's providing it to you, that company is monetizing that information. So you're making this trade of information for value, and you're ha doing it every day of your life, more than likely. And you guys are evolving. Many of you were born in the last couple of decades. Uh, you are what they call digital natives. You've gotten just great at taking digital experience A and digital experience B and combining them together to make your digital life. That's why. The world's right in front of us. Maybe the better question is, so what? So all these connections are happening. Why are you up on stage talking to me today about all these connections? I carry them with me already. 
well, I want to make sure that we're not all becoming the proverbial frog in the pot, that the temperature isn't just turning up little by little until it boils, because the world is boiling, not in a bad way, kind of in an exciting way, but all those connections adding slowly over time may prevent us from seeing really what the big trend is. And it's a big trend. In fact, I believe and my colleagues believe, we believe this is the next discontinuity, big word for massive change of context. The change of context for the, the world that you live in, the world you play in, the world you work in, and for the, all, of the, all of you entering the workforce who are already in it, the world that you compete in. Now, there's certain kinds of discontinuities, and this connected world is one that would be driven by technology, and sometimes it's helpful to look at history. So let's think of some other discontinuities that had massive change of the same scale. The steam engine, electrical power distribution and gener generation and distribution. The advent of silicon and the creation of, of computers in the first place. These are all massive technological shifts that change society. And you're sitting in the midst of one right now as we connect everything. These are the types of changes that disrupt industries and disrupt well beyond industries. When you made the steam engine, it wasn't just about the locomotive. It was about the steam ship. It was about making a new power source for uh, manufacturing facilities. It was about disrupting all things that basically moved. So when you have this kind of discontinuity, this kind of change, for those of you that work in or, or own or try to run or maybe have the vision of starting a company, there's going to be new strategic forces at work, and it should make you all think about changing your strategy or changing your company's strategy. And you've got to decide what kind of strategy you want to change. Are you going to change just a functional strategy of how you're going to deploy resources for, say, HR or for IT or for the supply chain? Or are you going to uh, change the business strategy and answer kind of the question, how do you compete in the business that you're already in? Are you going to recapitalize your company? Or are you going to add more workforce or add more things to it because you can now generate more data? Or are you going to go all the way to the kind of the supreme level of, of strategy, to the corporate strategy, the granddaddy of them all, and answer the question, what business are you going to even be in? Now, in this, in this region, we're answering that question right now. You see it in the headlines all the time. Are you an automotive company where you design, engineer, manufacture, distribute, service vehicles? Or are you a mobility or transportation company where you're more, your, your core business is moving things, moving people? and the device is just one part of your value chain. That's an example of corporate strategy shift, and that is on the mind of many professionals, and I know some of you are, are in the auto industry, and that's not just an auto industry piece. That's an that's a every industry kind of question that needs to be asked right now. So two quick examples. Before this discontinuity, before this internet, we were in stable times. We had a firm. They created a strategy and a structure. They created things, and they offered them to market. And other firms did the same, and everybody kind of understood what the discrete value of these things were. The comp competitors were pretty much well known, and you had stable markets and industries, which Wall Street just loves. After the discontinuity, here's what's coming down the type. You still have, you still have products. You still have firms making those products. Those products now are spitting out information, and that information may be driving value to the markets. That information may be actually driving more value than the thing itself to the market. So first of all, the firms may be evaluated not only on the products or the services, but also on the information that those products or services are generating. Let alone if those products start talking with one another and it starts bringing markets together, you're ripe for disruption. So you guys should all be thinking, this is an exciting time to be coming into the workforce or being in the workforce. That's a lot of opportunity. Two quick warnings or two quick things to keep your eye on. The first is something called structural inertia. See, when someone founds a company, they come up with a strategy, and they create a structure to implement that strategy. See, the, the, the structure would be things like the human beings that are there, the processes, the IT systems, the policies, the culture, all the things that makes doing work one day to the next the same. And that structure is perfectly aligned to maximize that strategy. Now, come all, here comes the discontinuity and says, change of context. Let's have a new strategy. Well, formulating the strategy, that's not the hard part. The hard part is implementing the strategy. The hard part is changing the structure so that it doesn't lock you into an old strategy. That's around the time we are right now. That's, that's, as, this, as this change is happening, it's starting to impact industries. And winners or losers will be defined on how well they can change. You know, patternistically, if you look, uh, small companies are usually very agile, and large companies have the resources to basically define new spaces inside themselves and create new structures. It's the medium-sized companies that are struggling. 
And that's the medium-sized companies, and as well as all type of flavors companies that need leaders to be able to drive beyond that. And so that brings me to my second, my second point that I want to make sure you take home, and maybe the bigger one of them. I, I, I look at around the room, and I look at a bunch of either current or future leaders. People that come to TED talks are, are, are inquisitive. You're looking for hints of the future. You're looking to be entertained as well, I'm certain. And you got to kind of think of how you got here. As music groups came on, and I saw quite a few of you guys tapping your toe and starting to, to dance a little bit. When I was a student here many, many years ago, I'd, I'd venture into Pontiac, and there were a bunch of clubs over there at the time, and I'd go dancing on a Friday night. And my wife's out here somewhere, and uh, at the time she was my girlfriend, and I would try to impress her with my serious dance moves, which I will not impress you with at all on this stage today. Apologize. Um, it actually, you know, thank me for not, not, uh, not doing any of that. Uh, the... Uh, but you got to think about when you guys go dancing, what dance moves do you use? At least for me, and I would project for some of you, the dance moves you use are probably the ones that you felt have given you success in the past, right? They're the ones that led to your first kiss or led to that second date or many things beyond, perhaps. They're, when the music changes from tune A to tune B, what do you do? You kind of still use those dance moves. You might just speed up or slow down. Well, the reality is uh, so do corporate leaders. Corporate leaders learn what they are doing through uh, learning the patterns that work. They develop a dominant logic of the industry. They, they know that if they do this, more than likely this is going to be the result. And that works really, really well in stable industries, in stable markets. Enter discontinuity. You might need to learn a new dance move. And here are a couple dance moves that might make sense in this new connected world is transforming traditional functions. Like how about accounting? We account things that are physical and that we can put our hands on most of the time. Those are the ones that have long-term value, but I just told you, it's not all about the stuff. It's about the data. How are we going to account for data in the future? What's the valuation of that going to look like? Or marketing. Where's marketing going to start? Is it going to always be down the traditional channels, or is it going to come through the product itself? Or how about IT? I mean, that's always been a back office thing. Slide the, the cheese sandwich under the door and let those guys code, you know? The reality is it's front and center in this connected world. How are we going to transform that? What leaders are going to bring that forward and launching new functions? Innovation's happening at the fringe of industry these days. Uh, insurance industry and auto industry getting together to bring new value. So we're going to need alliance management and integration pieces. You're going to need people that if you've been a product company to figure out how you're going to offer a service, or if you're a service company, how you're going to work with all these new connected products. This is the new dance. And I, I challenge all of you to be brave in it. You know, bravery is, uh, is something that, that is not often talked about in a, in a business setting all that often. It's, it's needing to get out in front just a little bit. It's, it's being willing to accept a little pain and enter the unknown. It's always easier to be brave when you're in a team. Being brave as a team is different than being brave as a solo leader. The unfortunate thing is there's not all that many people to follow in this uh, connected world yet. They're, the patterns haven't proven themselves out. So the hint I give you is look to the last discontinuity. Look to the era of the steam engine. If you had $100 to invest in that era, how would you have invested that? And then back up from it and look at the pattern that's there, because those patterns are probably going to prove themselves out for this technological discontinuity. So I hope you're all feeling a little bit ready to dance into this connected world, and I thank you very much.